Welcome to episode 259 of the Overlook Hour. I'm your host, Clark Little. Along with me, as always, is the man over in Oakland, California. For now, it's Randy Michael Stapp. Yes, sir. Also known as the man who drinks three beers with his friends and then falls asleep during a movie. <laughs> Randy, you missed how much? 50 to 60% of that movie yesterday? Probably like two thirds, yeah. Man almighty. I'll see you again, though. Did you go see it today? No, I haven't had time today, but probably sometime this week. All right, we'll talk about it later. Joining us, as always, is Russell John the Fisherman. What up? And Oksana Valerian of Osachi. Hi. Added a couple syllables. I noticed. What are you up to? How was your work day? We're recording work on Monday. Work was terrible. I was yeah. stressing all day. You, but you love your job. Oh no, work was fine. I mean, I was more mostly worried about the show. We got a lot to cover in like not a lot of time. All right, let's let's all right, let's get into that briefly. Yeah. Um, let's rephrase that. You apparently have a lot to cover <laughs> in a brief <laughs> amount of time that is completely under your jurisdiction because breaking news: Russell <laughs> is requested to end the show early today because he has to go to. I quote, guitar hero practice. Rock band. Rock band practice. Yeah. Please It's elaborate. very important. Do you really want me to? In a and again, brief the o- time period. The only reason I was saying uh, we have, I have a lot to talk about, but I'm trying, I'm trying my best to keep it under an hour. And I know yeah. I'm long-winded. Uh-huh. Do you really want to hear about the rock band practice? So from what I understand, our um, friend of the show. I'll sum it up really quick. Please. Kush and the BFG guys, uh, if you don't know who they are, you haven't been listening, don't bother <laughs> going back and figuring it out. Uh, birthdays aligned with a, a supposedly a tribute show they want to do. I want no part in organizing this event, and I said I will totally show up and play because I love rock band. And I feel a little bad because the only reason there is a practice today is because they're all terrible. And I'm like... I only want to do this if you guys are going to like play not on easy mode. When you say tribute, what don't what, ask? <laughs> what are you doing? Actually, it's not a tribute. It's a fundraiser they want to do. We're doing. Hey, but no, a rock band fundraiser. Hey, you know what? I'm right there with you though. Are I, you? Yeah, except that I really like playing rock band, so I'm like, I'll show up and play, <laughs> but y'all don't embarrass me with your medium mode. <laughs> Is someone going to play a Smashing Pumpkin song? Uh, I don't know. I think That's there's one on there. Question. I I feel like you. There is one. I'm sure there are many because 1979. there's a lot of. I think so. Yeah, but I, that might be Guitar Hero. I don't know. It all blends together. The rock band thing has only come up in the past like two months. I used to play that game every day though. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I re-downloaded everything connected to the internet. Big mistake. If you bought a lot of music back in the day, do not hook it up online. A lot of the licensing ran out, and all the updates just removed most of the library. It's brutal. I don't know. I just, you, my perspective of you changed today. That's, Why? I don't know. I've give, I cut you a lot of slack. You want to, you, wanna, you know, have fun with your Dungeons and Dragons? I support that. But <laughs> anytime you want to cut the show short, to go have fake band practice. You keep saying short. I'm. I just want to keep my commitment to the uh, loyal audience we have, and try and keep it under an hour, which I think we've been doing really good at like an hour ten. I don't think any of you thought we could do that. I did. He did. Okay, That's why well, I named faith. the show the Overlook Hour. All right. Yeah. And then I have a part of the problem is I have a new segment that I was going to crowbar in right here. Oh, because- Randy's favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? On my Spotify, uh, uh, what do they call it? Like radar radio or release uh, radar. Yeah. Where they kind of recommend stuff based on what you listen to. Turnstile showed up on there. Oh, and I cringed and my eyes rolled and blood came out of my ears. And I thought of Randy. I've never actually listened to them. Oh, okay. But They're- a lot of people they- I know do. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they're trendy AF, right? Yeah. Anyway, over the weekend, they're I... They're like the in sync of hardcore? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. They were very poppy. But again, I... Yeah. How can Whatever. you... Ha- what's hardcore poppy? Go listen to Turnstile. Right. They had a song about a holiday. And I think holiday kept coming up in the course. Like an American holiday or a British holiday? I think it was uh, neutral culturally. 
Interesting. <laughs> just, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It could have been either. I didn't pay much attention. Randy, your thoughts? Was it Holiday in Cambodia? No. All right. <laughs> and uh, this past week, the most notable thing that happened is it was my mom's birthday. Ah, uh, happy birthday, Lori. So Lord. I uh, brought Terrell over, who we mentioned on the show a bunch. Uh, he actually writes for The Overlook. We should do a better job of introducing him. We'll probably have him on again in the future. But we went over there and bugged my mom. Uh, my mom, who turned 60 years old, oddly. Bro, your mom and my mom are like I know a week or two weeks apart. That's why I was like, and you know who mentioned that hmm. is my mom, because she's the only listener we have on the show. And she went, wait, Clark's mom just turned 62. What day is your mom's birthday? Uh, the 13th, July. Oh, yeah. She's uh, eight days. Is your mom a cancer, too? Oh, you don't well. know the Zodiac. <laughs> Don't answer that. That was a joke there. All right. And uh, yeah, then she's the fifth, eight days. Terrell threw in, who he does all her Blu ray stuff. He threw in his mom's birthdays in December, and she's also turning 60. Hey, look at so that. So, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Anyway, uh, love you, mom. But she mentioned to me that uh, a show has returned that I promised to bring back up when it came back. And I was like, fuck, I had all this stuff I wanted to do. Like, I had a whole idea for a segment that I'm just going to crowbar in here. Tell me if you like it, Clark, because I know you already hate the concept. But uh, here we go. This will be the T-O-H-P-P-B-T-T-O-H, or The Overlook Hour Presents Podcast Better Than The Overlook Hour. (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) What's happening is uh, Your Own Backyard, Episode 9 and 10 dropped. And again, your own backyard. Kristen Smart went missing like fucking 15 years ago. And there's this guy, Paul Flores, who everybody thought it was him. It was a Cal Poly thing. So he got arrested along with his dad. And the the podcast who had grown in like huge uh, volume kind of ended. But it wasn't like the story wasn't over. And he was like, you know, I'm going to bring the podcast back. And it came back. What's the podcast? It's about C- Kristen Smart. I mentioned this like a long time ago. I don't know who Kristen Smart it's is. It's okay. I know Randy and Oksana remember. I know you. It's fine. I know you tune me out half the time. But uh, there's been an update. And in these two episodes, my mom mentioned she's a big fan of uh, true crime. Yeah. She's like, hey, the show came back and you never mentioned it on the show. Also, uh, it's brutal. And I was, I was kind of like taken aback. I'm like, my mom... You know, she's, a, again, a true crime fan. So I'm like, I'm going to wade into it. Episode nine. Again, these episodes are called uh, The Beginning of the End. It's a two part. The first one, eh, we're just kind of like catching up on the case. And we're, he's kind of building a story. Episode 10. Oh, my God. So many listeners of the podcast have reached out, giving their own testimonials of like Paul Flores. And I pulled one. Now, I hadn't finished the episode because I thought this one was pretty good. So I'm just going to play that now and then I'm going to follow it up. Uh, Here we go. One woman I spoke to through email believes that Paul may have stolen her underwear out of the laundry room at her apartment complex on several occasions. And while she can't say it was Paul for sure, she and her family did frequent the blockbuster he worked at. And it occurs to me that Paul had access to the addresses and phone numbers of every customer who came into the store. So when I heard that, one, I thought, what a great premise for like a horror movie. Like somebody following you from like a video store. And originally, I was going to lean into a joke with you because you worked at a video store. Yes, my life. Then we pushed the episode back a day and I listened to the rest of it. And it is incredibly grim. There are women who woke up naked in his bed who had DNA tests done. Cosby? Kinda. This this motherfucker was he was uh date raping people with eyedroppers and they go into detail on what happens when you ingest that and it's not fun. So again, I thought it was an interesting story. It's a great podcast and it's local. I'm 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 shocked you don't remember it, Clark. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll remind you after when we have more time. Okay. Well hopefully <laughs> the listeners. Randy, know you know happening. you remember what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I never yeah, finished I'm, it though. I'm, Okay, you should jump back in. Nine and ten. Nine is pretty good. Ten is fucking, dude, it's brutal. I don't do true crime shit. Yeah, and again, what I really liked about it was the production. It's an indie thing, but it's got that NPR vibe, which I fucking don't like. Yeah. But again, a lot of like, you know, non-personality or non-celebrity testimonials and stuff is really interesting. 
Yeah, well, they already killed a person. Don't kill my time. I, <laughs> well, allegedly. Even though everybody on that show calls in, they're like, the minute I saw his face on Unsolved Mysteries, I said, he did it. Yeah, no. Well, true crime podcasts are capital murder of my time. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for allowing. Did you like that stinger music? I did. Okay, I figured you would at least be in for there. But uh, the acronym took me to sleep. Took you to You didn't like T-O-H-P-P-B-T-T-O-H? It's no, the- it, no, it sounds like a disorder that I have. <laughs> That's why. Okay, okay. Let's let uh, David start the show officially then. All right, DL. Good morning. It's July 19, 2021, and it's a Monday. Today, I was thinking about the platters and the year 1958, and they're a great version of the song, Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. Everyone, <laughs> have a great day. He fell asleep briefly there. <sighs> I forgot the door. <laughs> no, he, I, I blew it. Okay. Remember, I played the wrong thing. It's, yeah. Right. He's calling him in. I'm sorry, he, he wasn't really showing up. <sighs> the platters. I know. Oh, and, okay, I didn't want to jump right into it, but did you have a chance to watch the uh, found footage movie? Of yeah, which yeah. you were speaking? No. Okay, let's bump it to next week then. Because okay. I'd like to do it with you. I'd like to bounce it off of you. All right. So we'll we'll uh, do TBR next week? Yeah. All right. Let's do that. You have something in its space? Uh, I did the thing earlier. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Since I forgot Randy fell asleep during Pig. Yeah. <laughs> or is anybody going to cover that? Yeah, let's talk about that now. Or Okay, we could now, yeah. yeah. So yesterday, um, we recorded our interview. Uh, which you will hear on Thursday. It's a wonderful interview. We talked to the uh, guys behind the motion picture, The Alien Report, um, which we've talked about on this very show. And uh, we go into detail about the film and uh, listen to Thursday's episode. It's fantastic. So after we wrap that up, we decided that we wanted to go see our friend, our pal, Randy Michaelstadt, over on his turf. We were the away team for the first time. We went to his home yeah. field in Oakland, California. And of course, we knock on the door. Russell had he mistimed his urination schedule. He had to pee at an alarming rate. Mm. I I accredit that to sitting down with all the pressure <laughs> on the bladder. Believe me, I know. So we were going to a brewery and I knew I had time to kill before we left. Because Oksana hadn't gotten ready yet. Your mic's off. You can't, you can't answer. Rude. Yeah. And, uh, but factual. It, the brewery we were going to, I actually had one of the beers in my closet. So I took it out and I was like, I'm going to play a game. I'm going to drink the beer. Before we left, I went to the bathroom. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so you went to the bathroom, then you chugged the Literally, beer? No, no. I killed the beer, went to the bathroom before we got in the car. Okay. And then it, it snuck up on me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what happened. No, you say snuck up, but there was a lot of preamble before the urination. Oh, I was, dude, I was, I was dancing in yeah. the car. It was brutal. Uh, Oksana missed the first exit. I did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> and Prolonged eight... our journey. Oh, man, it was brutal, too. I'm watching the map. It's a turn off, and then we go down the street, make a right, and it, we missed it. And, that, and then the little like line change, like in GTA. Yes. Oh my God. It was like we had to go down on a highway, turn around, get back on another. Oh, it was a nightmare. I, it was like four minutes. It was eight minutes, and I was ready to get out. When I was you, looking. But when you got a belly full of pee and a narrow urethra that <laughs> sometimes narrow, like to squirt blood out, you he know, was I in gotta, there, <laughs> he was in there for nine minutes peeing. <laughs> Man, I can't help it sometimes. <laughs> I really envy the guys that can go in there and just like, you know, let it go and be gone. What? <laughs> You know, you just dump it. Let it go and be gone. Like some people have a bucket. I'm like squeezing a big bottle with one of those nipple lids on it. (laughs) Really? Yeah. It's well, I mean, I would compare the stream to that. Is it dribbles? No, it's it's like a little tight stream. I'm losing my religion. (laughs) Sleep. I've I've lost some velocity over the years. You know? Yeah. I'm I'm I'll I'll be 35 next month, so I feel like, you know. 15 years ago, 
Whew, I could peel the bark <laughs> off a pine tree. I don't know about much these days. I, yeah, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I don't know when it was, but a long time ago, before Adam Stilwell came on the show for the first time, I went into detail about a, a procedure I had done where they put a camera in me, and uh, yeah. Oh, is that, is that why you thought of Stillwell? Because you thought of your dick? No, because he came on the Stillwell's show. Stillwell's a he, dick. No, well, kind of. <laughs> but uh, he came on the show and said he listened to one episode to get a the vibe. Yeah. And it was that one where I walked through the whole damn story of that. Where Oksana watched doctors torture me with a camera. Oh, my God. <laughs> so dramatic. Anyway. So, so we get to his house, open up the door, and Randy is free basin cocaine. <laughs> 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 wild no we get to, uh, to randy's uh lovely home which he was only he's only right you got one more month yeah babe uh yeah a month and a half something like that <laughs> yeah then skedaddle a lot of vhs tapes in randy's house not that mine he says but yeah. his roommates that all had the label taped over with the girl's name written on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and disney clamshells oh yeah there you go perfect way to hide them that's right but inside, pubic hair. <laughs> and to be fair, he did show me the clamshell of uh, the Little Mermaid with the wiener on the cover. It had the wiener tower? It had the wiener. Mm. Ready your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> He's got that one. I think it's worth something. <laughs> By he, you mean your roommate, right? Correct. I air quoted when I did that. Your roommate. Because we did not see a roommate in there when we visited. That's right. Oh, he exists, I swear. Mm, okay, Norman. <laughs> So we, after, uh, you know, we got Randy away from his uh, pipe, uh, we, we went over to the Ghost Town Brewery, and then joining us, late, mm -hmm. Josadi Perkins. Our who's, beloved who's not Josadi here. Perkins. So who's who's yeah. not here. <laughs> and then Josadi, um, now at the Ghost Town Brewery, every Sunday, uh, they, now I, now Randy, do they have a different food vendor there every day that the bar is open? I believe so, yeah. It's been a while besides when we just went since I've been there, but I think they have like a rotating thing. Yeah, and I think uh, the the uh, group that was out there yesterday, a uh, husband and wife pizza team, uh, they had a couple of their pizza. By the way, Randy, I priced those ovens. Moderately priced. A thousand? How much? A thousand. No, no, sir. You can get you can get a decent piece pizza oven for 400 the one that they were using was between four and five hundred bucks. Yeah, that's not bad. That's no, not bad at all. It's really not. No. And I'm seriously debating it. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to quit. Let's, Let's make a pizzeria. Yeah. That was my first real job. Let's clear the back deck, baby. <laughs> the back deck boys? The back, de <laughs> back deck boys pizza. You have people come up to our uh, porch. Or what? That would be a deck. And the, Dude, they'd have to BDBP? walk up the hill. BDBP. Wait, BDBP. Now you like acronyms. Yeah, but that was good. Uh, Not WWW, <laughs> whatever the fuck you just said. I say you measure an acronym by how many letters, and you can't be T O H P P B T T O H. It's not funny. Repetition is funny. <laughs> okay. And B and D is funny. We'll see the Twitter poll after. All right. Oh, we'll do it. Oxon, <laughs> do it now. You're not doing anything. <laughs> so we have a nice time at the brewery. Okay. Uh, we had um, hit and miss with the drinks, I think. We were exploring. I know. I had a good time. Yeah, me too. Uh, Randy had too much of a good time because apparently <laughs> he got a little sleepy town because then we went and saw uh, the new Nicolas Cage motion picture entitled Pig <laughs> at the Shattuck Center. Now, before we show okay. the Shattuck... I was going to be like, you skipped a beat uh, Yes, I did. Um <laughs> <laughs> so we are leaving the brewery. Um, we get into the car. I go into the car like, you know, a regular human adult gets into a car. You plop like an animal. I have to. <laughs> and when I plopped like an animal, ripped my shorts. <laughs> now, Randy and I got into the car at the same time. Randy heard the rip too. <laughs> and he's like, Did you? And then he sees the rip. We both look at the rip at the same time and we both lose it. 
Now the rip is in a very peculiar place because it is right on. It was right on top of my right thigh. Right down the middle of my thigh. But on the pocket side. On not the, the pocket yeah. side. Because I think I had my phone there. And just the way that my... I have no ass. <laughs> I have no butt whatsoever. Every pair of pants I have always fall down. I've got no hips. i got no thighs. But my, but my thighs are tree trunks. <laughs> I have enormous thighs. I have to get bigger pants because the thighs don't... I, I don't understand why my thighs are so big, but it's a problem. I wish some of that would go towards my butt. Is there a, is there a thigh butt transplant? I don't know. Randy, look into it. Probably. I'm sure there is. You can, you can pay for anything these Randy, days. This is why I ask you to put Tor on my computer. So I can look this up on the dark web. Just use DuckDuckGo. That works. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to get it on the cheap. I don't have to Silk Road this surgery, dude. To start doing yeah, you, squats. You really, you really lucked out with that rip. Yes, it, I did. any other location, and it might have been a deal breaker. Hey, by the way, it was a big rip. It was big, the whole length of the short. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't in the crotch, and it was just like you know, we went to the movies with a giant rip. In my shorts, who cares? Um, but my favorite thing of this is that this is by far. The hardest I have ever seen Randy laugh. I want to see his face. <laughs> Put his face on it. This is the hardest I have ever seen him laugh. But no noise came out of him whatsoever. <laughs> but he was kneeled over in the car. Did he get a tear? I don't know. Because no. his face was not facing me. But he was just, he was boiled well, over. You would, have, you would have been doing um, him a medical favor if you made him laugh so hard he teared up. <laughs> Oh, that is true. Randy, how, uh, now, do you went to the eye doctor again today? Uh, correct, yeah. What's the prognosis? Negative? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they basically just said that I have what's called blepharitis, but essentially just means like the oil glands in my eyes that create oils to keep your eyes um, not dry are just blocked. So I d my eyes are just dry all the time. Oh. And this is why you have no emotion. Correct. Yeah. Oh. It's a technical term for you don't have a soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we watch Pig and Randy snooze through it. Now, Randy snoozed, and you simmered. No. All right. So, we'll get into the movie. Do you want to save the movie, or we'll, we'll get into oh, our we, critiques we, of the movie? Whatever. You, I, I can tell you want to talk about the non-event that happened. Well, it, yes, it turned out to be a non-event. <laughs> so, again, we had a nice time. What a lovely, after, what a lovely afternoon yep. we had yesterday and evening. Um, we get, we Honestly, get to the movie. It makes me think we should have done it a lot more before Randy leaving. Sure. Uh, yeah, you well, know. We got, we got time. What are you going to do? We don't have time because I'm in Arizona for the next month. <laughs> But um, we get to the movie, a decently uh, crowded movie at the Shattuck Cinema. And early on in the movie, you doing okay over there? Sorry, just this Topo Chico <laughs> goodness. Topo Chico. The mole boy. <laughs> That's what it stands for. Do you know that? No. Topo Chico means mole boy. What? Topo is mole. <laughs> And Chico is boy. What does that have to do with the... Oh, I don't know, but that's the name of the one. I mean, I like it more, honestly. Mole boy. <laughs> so, pig. So, there was a uh, person who, very early in the movie, started making uh, comments about the movie. Like, what was the first thing that was mentioned? Here, I think I could run through it. Yeah. Uh, pig, in, in a brief way, I know we'll talk about it more, is kind of like... An anti John Wick. We were going to get into that, but I wanted to set the table that there was a bit of a heckling situation. A guy. No, for sure. And I mean, it's a bait and switch, kind of, yeah. where you get Keanu in that movie who's quiet, but it's kind of like a revenge and there's a build. Where in this movie, you get a quiet Nicolas Cage and you're thinking there's going to be a build with an action payoff, and there isn't. And this dude, when he figured out that we weren't going to get any more action, allegedly started heckling. See, that's why I didn't want to phrase it that way, because you have your theory and I have my theory. Okay, oh, what was your theory? My theory is that he's touched by an angel. Okay, yeah, you thought he wore a helmet in. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, no. These things happen, dude. Nah, I stared him down. As someone who has heckled people <laughs> who were touched by an angel, 
that that shit sticks with you, but man. But how did you didn't see the wheelchair he was in at the time? Don't beat yourself up over that. Was he in a wheelchair? <laughs> now this there guy was a guy in a wheelchair back there. No, it was no. Okay, there was one. I was I was referring to a fake incident in your luck. past. This guy was a giant with glasses on, and he was angry because Nicolas Cage didn't get violent. Touched by an angel. And he, dude, what, what was the, the joke that didn't land? Oh, uh, towards like, towards the... the No, it was absolutely in the third act. It was third act. It was the third act where um, a, a rather, you know, semi-tense scene of Nicolas Cage pouring wine <laughs> uh, for the great Adam Arkin. And then he has his first bite and the guy says, paired perfectly. Yeah. Crickets too, yeah. but before that he had been going. Oh, oh, c- come on! Are you kidding me? Oh, and the, honestly, the only reason I started getting mad was because again we were having a nice evening and everybody was having fun, and finally Jasadi went, "Dude, are you fucking kidding me, man!" And then I went like, "Yeah, fuck this dude." That's all. And, it took. <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, what what did he say? Yeah, well, he he was talking shit again and then at the end i just turned around in my seat because we always sit like three rows up from the screen so oh because right he there. died out laughing at the end oh that's right because it was over yeah and then you turned around well, i turned and around said, to try and see who up. he was no and then he got up and went are you kidding me i went Dude, shut up and then he he just left yeah yeah, yeah to go tighten his helmet and then I, I was like where'd clark go and i had to get you from under your seat yeah <laughs> Because I have to protect you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to protect you from you, dude. No, that guy was rude. And, you know, I learned at the yeah, Alamo. But let him be. The Alamo has a no-talking policy, right? And we were good friends with the program director, Mike Keegan, over there. And RIP. I was in many a room. Well, the, the Alamo should be coming back next month, but whatever. And we were in many a room with loud people who were next to us. And I remember Mike coming up, and he's like, hey, man, you guys are regulars, and you're like family here. You got to tell these people to shut up. He's like, it's really on the whole audience. Like, we should be policing each other. It, not in that way, because I know that's not a popular uh, thing to do. But it's like, hey, man, like, they're breaking the rules. Like, put up a card or something. And I remember we went and watched a the Beyond screening with live music. The motherfucker was there. I can't remember. I can't pull the name right now. And uh, the two women next to me were fucking wasted and they were just going at it and i remember i was like making out no no they were they were talking about everything but the movie or the band and loud and our oksana if you want to know the one who gets mad in the theater it's her (laughs) she's the one that almost got us into a fight at the amc but you know i I, i'm the level-headed one i remember Okay. Yeah. Well, no, here's mm-hmm. the thing. So at that don't know if I'd say that, but continue. I didn't do anything. I shrunk into my seat and I was just kind of like, oh man, it's so awkward. Like I don't I don't want to <laughs> the other thing is, you know, I I weigh too much. So whenever I like, hey man, chill, it gets escalated in a way that it wouldn't if it was Oksana saying that. So I didn't do anything. And one of our buddies, Ryan, he worked there at the time. He came up eight rows from the back, leaned over their seat and said, hey, shut the fuck up. We're watching this. And they went, oh, and it was done. And I'm like, you know what? Those East Coast kids, they know what's up. Yeah. You know, Marble's RIP, same kind of thing. She'll tell people to shut up. So, you know, I was just trying to do the duty. Yeah. It's Dashetic. Well, you weren't doing the duty. <laughs> you were doing the duty. You do it in the gentleman's room. All right. You go to the water. Again, I apologize. You go to the water closet. I didn't want to make you uncomfortable. I didn't mean to wake up Randy. I just, you know, I wanted to keep law and order there. Yeah, Randy missed the best parts of this movie. Randy will go again, though. For sure. Randy should. Yeah. I, honestly, I thought you were going to dig this movie the most. Okay, let me explain something to you. I really enjoyed the movie. But when you asked me that question, I know you had just assaulted a man who had, was touched by an angel. <laughs> so I was, and I was also, you know, uh, altered states. Oh you, yeah, you understand? Yeah, you were a vapor villain, and you were like a beer in. Yeah, I went to the bat. I went to the bathroom to go vape. Did you vape in the bathroom? No, I didn't. I actually had to go pee. But you did. You no, vaped in the no, bathroom. I didn't. No, I, let me let me rephrase. <laughs> My intent was to vape in the bathroom. But I did not. Uh huh. What I did was sneakily vape 
in the theater. Oh my god! Somebody walked in a bathroom <laughs> stall and they see you at a urinal vaping with no, your ripped here's shorts. What, here's <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> what's happened? Here's what happened. I went into the bathroom, and the stalls were closer, and I just didn't feel like. And someone was there, so I just didn't feel like going into a stall. I mean, the, the <laughs> urinals were closer. I didn't feel like going into a stall to vape, so I just peed at the urinal like a gentleman. Yeah. And then went back. No, I you probably I, peed pretty quickly, too. Be proud of it. 15, 15 <laughs> seconds. That's light speed in my book. You know? Um... No, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Um, frankly, maybe we shouldn't say a whole lot because Randy didn't oh, see Oh, that's it. right. Well, Randy, are you going to bring it up next week if we don't cover it now? No. <laughs> <laughs> then you could do a Randy retread, dude. I'm good. I'll, I'll watch something else, I'm sure. No, but Russ, I think you did a good job of explaining that, yeah, this is the anti-Mandy uh, you know, the anti John Wick. Yeah. Uh, the revenge film that people thought it was going to be. It's a Buddhist revenge. It film. is. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you. When they stole the pig. <laughs> that was horrifying because the scream, the scream that came out of that pig. Yeah. Sounds like a human. Very human. And when that happened, the thought entered my mind. I shouldn't eat pork anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent thought that. Why? Because they scream? No, because because pigs are highly intelligent. Yeah, for sure. We know pigs are highly intelligent. And so when you think about that pig being kidnapped, she knew yeah. that this was not good. And I just fell for that pig, man. I get it. Those they great. also taste great. Yeah, they really do. I know. <laughs> they taste so good. Put that bacon in a milkshake. Mm. Did you know I wrestled pig once? <laughs> You've mentioned it on the show before. <laughs> yeah. It was greased up. It was a greased up little porker, and I had to run and catch it. All right. I was I, in second grade. Randy, you got to rewatch it. It's, Took it down. It's A24 light. I, you know, living with the film... Um, for a day now, I do like it more upon reflection. I think there's a great, um, you know, deal with emotions theme in this film that doesn't really hit until you think about it later. And again, that pig is beautiful. Uh, it was, I don't know, man, I, Nicolas Cage. I didn't think he would be fun to watch being like a silent, disheveled looking weirdo. But now saying it out loud, it, it's like, yeah, he, he should be. I wanted more cooking. Also, the weirdest fight club scene I've ever seen in a movie. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Randy, were you awake for that? I don't believe so. Okay. Randy, were you awake when he stole the bike? Also, no. Oh, oh man. you missed every Dude. best part of this movie, man. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's move on. Did you like what you saw? Oh, yeah. The opening beautiful. closing credits. <laughs> yeah, it looked great. <laughs> Got a brooding Nick Cage. He was brooding. All right, Randog, what you bring to the table, son? So speaking of uh, movies that kind of set up a John Wick thing, I watched a movie called Gunpowder Milkshake on Netflix. The fuck? I hate uh, that name. Yeah, I saw um, the new Beverly posting about it that they were going to be showing it like last weekend. Um, that's the only place I'd ever heard about it, and I was like, oh no, it sounds like a kind of fun title. The new Beverly? Yeah, the new Beverly was posting about it. So it's on Netflix now, but it's playing like a limited theatrical release. I'm not sure if it's playing anywhere up here in the Bay Area. This, this sounds like a Tarantino thing. It, it's very much uh, a mashup of like, yeah, John Wick, Tarantino, uh, like Rodriguez. It's very, uh, it's got a ton of action. Um, features Karen Gillan. Uh, she is a young assassin who teams up with her mother, who was a retired assassin, to save a young girl from other assassins. Um, <laughs> she's, she's, she's the tall redhead from Jumanji, right? Yes, I believe so. I like her. She's a true blood girl? She in true I don't blood? Know. She ain't true Sorry, blood. Sorry, tall redhead, it just makes me think of that. No, she ain't. Suki. Suki. Oh, she's blonde. Suki. Okay. <laughs> you also got uh, Lena Headley in this. Um, you got a, a Paul Giamatti. Carl Gugino? Paul? Um, Carlo Gugino. Yeah, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. 
Um, but it's, it, it's good. It's fun. It's got a lot of really good action scenes in it. Um, definitely, you know, wears all of its uh, influences uh, on its sleeve. Uh, it's definitely just doing like a fun action thing. Um, I don't know. Based on the title, I was just kind of down just to like not, you know, take it too seriously, not expect like something uh, crazy in it. I don't know. It, it delivered on it. It's just a, uh, it's a John Wick movie with um, ladies doing the ass kicking and I'm always kind of into that, so. You just need a dominatrix, dude. Nah, dude. Well, have you ever thought about that? I haven't. Are you thinking Until about it now. now? <laughs> but, Maybe you do want to get dominated, dude. That's a road we can go down. I'll make some calls. Have you ever come to our uh, Christmas party, Randy? The white elephant ones? Uh, Maybe once. Okay. I don't know if he has. I don't think he has. The um, what the fuck, dude? The uh, you're fine, coming this year from Atlanta. The Get ready. The lady who did all the tattoos I have is a dominatrix, and I'm like, you might have been in the room with one, and she would love to like tenderize you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I Randy, think I'm good. <laughs> I don't know. But Randy, make us this promise: if you do go to a dominatrix, at least get an audio recording. Can you wear a wire? Oh, <laughs> I don't know how that would work. Randy, <laughs> you would keep your clothes You'd on. You'd figure it know. out. <laughs> I can't make any promises. Now, Randy, uh, I, I'm looking here on the International Movie Database because I'm doing my research wells because I am also an investigative journalist from uh, classically trained from the University of Southern Mississippi. And I see that the runtime of Gunpowder Milkshake is one hour and 54 minutes. Ooh. That is wrong. Oh, wait, no, oh, never mind. Boy. That is not wrong. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying at 156 minutes, but I was just not paying attention. Uh, yeah, no, one hour and 54 minutes. Yeah, it's almost two hours. I honestly didn't feel the runtime that much. Um, yeah, I don't, there's, there's enough action in it that keeps it, keeps it fun and looking forward to you know, other set pieces and stuff. So I enjoyed it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's called Gunpowder old. Milkshake. You know, how seriously can you take it? Well, I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> they do vegan ones. They, we got a place out here uh, close to my house that does apparently good vegan milkshakes. Lutism. I've bought, I've, I've purchased three pints of ice cream and I'm sampling them all. Frankly, I'm not happy with any of them. Actually, one's very good and the other two are fine. But I've been, I've been, I've been hitting the, have been hitting the cream pretty hard. Dude. <laughs> Heavy cream. I've been taking my pills, so I've been fine. Also, I think that I have a food allergy specifically with blue cheese, which is a problem. It's probably just like more lactose heavy than most cheese. Is that a thing? I don't know. Maybe it's more potent. More potent. <laughs> Do, all cheese doesn't have the same amount of lactose? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question for DuckDuckGo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Randy, you got anything else about uh yeah quickly i saw uh roadrunner last tuesday thanks to uh friend claudine who may or may not listen to the show i'm not sure um i highly doubt it i don't know she she was at uff uh online for a very short period of time mm. oh well thank you for your service um but yeah, yeah i saw the yeah this is the anthony bourdain documentary directed by uh morgan neville who did 20 feet from stardom uh won't you be my neighbor and i don't know a bunch of other things uh so yeah this pretty much a uh, very linear fashion documentary just kind of following his career from his days as a chef and then turned to writer and then kind of him getting his uh his feet wet with like television and then uh you know making many many shows um yeah and it's uh it, it's really good it doesn't focus too much on like the death stuff it's not like too sad but there are a lot of interviews with um just people that were very close to him in his life. Uh, David Chang, who does uh, Momofuku. Uh, there's a lot of really good interviews with him. Um, Josh Hom from Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, apparently they were like pretty good buddies. And then uh, it talks a lot to the crew that was filming Parts Unknown with him. Um, I guess they just worked with him for like a really long time. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's really good. It's, you know, a lot of talking heads. Um, and a lot of no just David Byrne. no David Byrne doesn't show up. I don't know if they were homies, but yeah, I don't know. It's okay. good. I think if you're a Bourdain fan, um, you're gonna, you're gonna dig it. 
Now, Randy, do they go in, do they interview his wife, who, of course, is a pedophile? <laughs> they interviewed a couple of his ex-wives. I don't know who you're referring to being a pedophile. I'm referring to uh, Argento. He was married to, oh. uh, what's her name? What's Argento's daughter? Asia? Yeah. He's married to Ar- Asia Argento, who is a pedophile. They don't talk to her, but there is a lot of footage of uh, him in Asia. And he covered it up. There was a sex scandal with her and a 15-year-old, and he covered it up. Was he paid like $100,000. Yeah, it's a whole thing. They didn't go into that documentary? No, they went into the like Me Too stuff. Cause... Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Googled uh, Anthony Bourdain pedophile, and uh, Snopes comes up with TV celebrity and food writer Anthony Bourdain was planning to run an expose of a pedophile ring at the time of his death. So did he get uh, accidentally suicided too? Well, Asia Argento like had intercourse with a 16-year-old and he like helped cover it up, I think. Oh, so you didn't know about the pedophile ring he was going to expose. The story's way bigger than you knew. Oh, let me tell you something. I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only so much I can say. All right. Yeah, no, I, I'm interested to see this. I, I of course... Um, you know, in, in enjoyed the Bourdain and his 47 television shows that he produced. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see it. Yeah. All right. This week, here's what I did. I started a new television series. Now, I'll do this from time to time, but, oh, boy, I had no idea the treasure trove that I was finding in the television series that started in 2018 <laughs> and ran to 2021. Oh, you're really teasing it. Out of Australia through the FXX <laughs> network. Did you forget the title? Next day on Hulu <laughs> is called Mr. In Between. Now, Mr. In Between, as I said, is an Australian produced show starring <laughs> Scott Ryan. <laughs> Scott Ryan has done two things. Those two things are a movie that he wrote, produced, starred, and directed called The Magician. The Magician is a faux documentary done in 2005. Ooh. Then in 2018, 13 years later, a television show was produced called Mr. In Between, based upon his character. In The Magician, which is an Australian hitman named Ray Shoesmith. This is one of the most riveting shows I've seen in a long time. Uh, They are 22 minutes long, darkly comedic, and uh, at times highly emotional. I've cried several times (laughs) during this show. Um, There are two episodes in particular that are just gut punches there's one in particular episode that really sort of seemed as like an outlier because in the show uh the stakes are all fairly low now he all right let me back up so scott ryan was um the magician basically started as um a school project when he was in film school and in year four of that, he he turned in the magician, and then I think there was like a half a million dollars that they got uh, to help with post-production things, and then they actually got a theatrical release. So the magician actually got a release, and, um, you know, he thought he was, you know, this was going to be the start of the career. Mm-hmm. Everything was going to get going. Um, he got cast in a movie uh, with Natalie Portman. Fell through. (laughs) Everything fell through, and he gave up. Oh, wow. He gave up on his Hollywood dream and became a pizza driver in the outskirts, in the outback of Australia. What what company? Doesn't say. Oh, boo. That's... Yeah. Journalism's dead. He found work delivering pizzas, (laughs) got his taxi license, and moved to Ichuka. Now, The Magician, I'm looking at the three posters available. Yeah. I love one. I couldn't care less about one, just completely neutral, and I absolutely hate one. I feel like he covered all the bases right there. Is that Russian? I, it looks like it to me. Oksana? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Confirmed. Confirmed. Yeah, that was cheesy. That, that's a good one. Though, that's right? the one I love. Yeah, that's a yeah, good one. Where he's standing in an alley. Also, um, props for IMDb. The second word in this is mockumentary. I, I want to watch it, yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend that you do because we, we make and do. We make and do what? There's plenty to explore here. That's all I'll say. All right. Um, because, you know, his story hits home to us. You know, he, he gave up. And then uh, Nash Edgerton, who is Joel Edgerton's brother, oh, okay. who was a stuntman turned director, Tight. Um, said, hey, let's make this into a show. But he did it with a heavy Australian accent, which I will refer to. Come on, to try it. Hey, mate, that's my as a show, yeah? Instant regret. I should, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. I didn't think you'd be so quick. Grab a couple Demi's and Vegemite, yeah? You had it in the holster ready. There was a bullet in the chamber there. I love cricket, oh mate. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> So they make it into a show. <laughs> it goes three seasons. And then from what I understand, he ended the show. Scott Ryan ended the show because he said, hey, I'm sick of this character. Oh, tight. And so I, I don't know what he's got planned next. But to I've watched the majority of the show. I have a few episodes left and I'll have watched the entire season. Uh, excuse me, the entire series, uh, which is three seasons. Love the show. Can't can't say enough about the show, but to go back and watch the movie through the perspective of having seen the show and how he um, really sort of formulated this character and really um, when you watch the movie, you see the germ of the character mm -hmm. and the show really builds a lot on that. Also, there's a lot of inside jokes in the show that are based from the movie. Um, and also he works on some jokes and. Uh, workshop some that actually are better in the show than he did in the movie so is the show a reimagining of the movie or are they to a certain degree because so the movie obviously is we're looking at 15 years time difference here. yeah so he's an older man um and in the show he's a father so that's why they call him in, mr in between because um he's a loving father who you know it's works, nobody. Works security. Right. And, uh, but is a, um, he's just, he's got a switch sort of thing. And the way that he, um, you know, talks about violence in his life, he's got, uh, complete control of it in his head. Everything makes sense to him. As a why he has to be violent. So it's it it's not Odenkirk without the government backing. Well, so they, they, there is a bit of of you know um, military uh, oh, element okay. involved. Yeah, because he is a veteran. Yeah, and also there's abuse from his father, um, and then his father also talks about uh, being a veteran. So it's Australian though. What's their equivalent? Is he like a Green Beret from over there? That's or the thing. They they don't go into specifics, and I'm uh, wondering like what. What war was Australia in? That yeah, time? like a Navy SEAL. But yeah, but like his dad talks about his dad was in Vietnam. Uh, you know, Australia went to Vietnam, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Thanks for helping out. I, know. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, sorry you got fucked up. But <laughs> um, I mean, the show is just so dense um, and the, the writing is so good be, and it's his performance is, is, is really something to behold because he really walks this line of being terribly charming and very scary at the yeah, same time. I love it. And it's, it's, it's honestly like he is the show he, and it's, it's astonishing that this is all he's done. You know, that that's what nobody was kind of missing is like Bob Odenkirk at no point felt terrifying. He felt like he deserved respect, but he always felt like a dad at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that paying off where it's kind of like Ray, Ray is scary. Yeah. Like my family doesn't know that side of me yeah. where they were doing that and nobody, but it wasn't like, it's like, yeah, but that guy's Captain America. Yeah. Like he's not like the Punisher. So, so in the, in the film, it's basically set up sort of like a man bites dog situation. Yeah. Right? Like he's being documented uh, by a film student. Um, oh, really? Who was oh, that's neighbor. rad. Yeah. And 
the only way that we would see this documentary is if he was dead. Cool. So that that is the story of the film, but in the movie just picks up, you know, as a as a traditional narrative where there is no uh faux documentary element. Um but great supporting cast. Um his kids great. His brother was great. Uh his buddy's great Gary, man. Man, it's a great show. <laughs> Mr. in between. I was um Pleasantly surprised and very happy. I feel like I'm more likely to watch the movie than the show. Is the show all? I'll tell you this. If you start the show, yeah. you'll keep going. Okay. If you start the show, you'll keep going. But because I... they're quick. They're t- now, Hulu, you got the commercials. Is it still in world camera the whole time? The show? No. Okay. No, the show's so. traditional. Yeah. Narrative. I don't, dude, I'm a narrative junkie. The in-world I, camera thing gets me, yeah. But it's hilarious. I actually, uh, I, I won't uh, revisit the segment that I introduced today, but Randy had recommended a show uh, while we were at that brewery, mm-hmm. and they had covered Trash Humpers. And when they were talking about why that movie has any value, or like, you know, the value they didn't see, I kept thinking, you have to think of it in the context of being a footage like bought at Goodwill, which they briefly mentioned, but I'm like, I, I realize how influenced by just that in-world camera narrative I am. Because it really does elevate the hell out of everything for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm hack. Well, I bought it on Amazon for two ninety nine. DVD or digital? Digital. Oh, you can buy it digitally for $2.99. Well, I wanted to hold it. The Magician. You can probably buy <laughs> a copy of it through your local <laughs> DVD wholesaler. Cool. I'm Clark Little. Russell. My turn? All right, what do you guys want to hear? Um, actually, let me look at how much time we got. I don't know. It's up to you, Mr. We got, band we got like nine minutes left. You know what? I'll blow through one. I, God damn. It's been a really busy month. And uh, last week, we went to the theater, and I watched Escape Room Tournament of Champions. <laughs> yeah, dude, you, thank you. When we're on the same page, it it really shows. And then we get work. And, and, and then we get into an argument. Um, Randy, I'm going to pitch this movie to you. I've seen it. Did you it. watch the... Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, fuck, Randy. Yeah, I texted Randy, you guys the other night. Yeah, oh, saw it, what bro. did you think of it? Um, I think I loved Thumb it. Oh, dude. Now, now, why do you think Randy loved it? Well, because the way I was going to pitch this movie, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, but now that I know Randy, uh, I thought Randy would like it because the first Escape Room was kind of like a... Uh, an epic version of the like game you do in your city. You know what I mean? Where you go to a room and it's like, Oh, here are some riddles and I'll figure a way out this movie. Narratively it's tournament of champions. So all of the characters have already been, they're familiar with the rules of the movie. So exposition is very minimal. We kind of get the hook into the plot. And once our characters are in it, dude, it's rapid fire. And uh, Randy just watched like what house of wax gunfire milkshakes. And we found out he loves action. He slept through pig. He hates drama. <laughs> this movie, dude, action packed, but th- in a short, like, um, street pitch kind of a uh, way. I figured I would sell this movie as Saw meets Final Destination. Yep. Where you're in a closed location, but you're doing the um, what is it, Rube Gold Goldberg? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. It's like it clicked to me. Like yesterday, and I forgot to mention it when we were hanging out. I'm like, dude, it's fucking a, an evolution of like Final Destination. Also, I've been on a kick of like watching interviews with like directors we would never hear from, like this guy. Yeah, dude, he directed, um, what did he do? I don't remember. Can you pull that up, Oksana? Um, Bro, can you rip this for me? Rip what? Escape Room. The movie? Yeah. Of course not. I would never do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. The taking of Deborah Logan? Yeah. What else did he do? Insidious, The Last Key. Yeah. He's kind of like all over the map. Because mm. the taking of Deborah Logan, I just mentioned how much I love In-World Camera. I watched that after the visit and it was kind of like, meh. But I mean, I, I enjoyed the film. I didn't like The Last Key. And me either. It was kind of like the Hollywood movie that I'm like, boring. But then I came into this and I'm like, well, What's different here? And I heard an interview. I was tempted to pull a clip of him talking, but he's so frantic and all over the place and long winded. 
and you know how much I hate that, that, uh, uh-huh. yeah, he, he was talking about building the sets and how to like storyboard them. Dude, it's pretty fucking interesting. So they, they'd make the location like, um, there's one that's like a beach. It's like a fake beach. The beach. And, uh, he talked about how they would have to design it, build it, and then kind of like walk through and figure out how the chain of events would go and where the cameras would be. And it's this whole big process. But the main thing that I like, it's a lot of practical effects. So when people are like, uh, light spoiler, when people get sucked into the beach, that's a real effect. And they made the sand bubble up. And yeah, I, w- I was kind of blown away. I think the movie's great. And Randy, I'm so happy to hear that you liked it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I, uh, I wasn't s- super skeptical coming into it, but it took maybe like five to ten minutes. And then I was like, okay, I think this movie's going to be gonna be a lot of fun it hits a good like a uh, nerdy like element too you know with all the puzzles and stuff so oh yeah and, uh, there was like the um so in the second room there's a, a atm pin code that they need to enter and i was very proud of myself that i knew what the code was before they knew what it was because they <laughs> show that number in the previous room mr fancy randy fancy cracked the code <laughs> Randy, have you done an escape room just once for your life? Was it a part of work or for fun? It was for fun. It was with like family stuff. Oh, what? dude. Did you get out of there? Uh, we did. I think with like very little time left, but we did. Did it. you solve it? I didn't solve it, no. Did you feel bad that you didn't solve it? <laughs> no. I did an escape room. I dodged poop on the way there. His mission was covered in human feces. <laughs> and then uh, we also won. I think we had nine minutes left. Have you ever done an escape room? Never, and I would never do one. Have you ever gotten a job as a host to an escape room? Nope. Have you ever applied? Try, yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Try again. Anyway, um, the film was great. Uh, I'm kind of bummed that you want to watch it like at home. Again, we do have a projector and everything. It's fun. Once it hits its stride, Dude, it's like if you are an ADD um, uh, phone warrior during a film, you're gonna it, you're gonna have to put up a fight because the movie will hold your attention, man. Good because the first one did not. I know you were not a fan of it. I slept during the first one. I think yeah, the sequel cool. was better than the original. Yeah, good because I hit rim cycle sleep during that first one. Yeah, but you kind of you you have that attitude that I have when you're talking about like an F one movie, where I'm like, yeah, but I just don't care. But you liked Cinna. What is that? The documentary. Oh, the documentary is good. Yeah. Okay, fine. It's like when people yeah. talk about Marvel movies. I'm like, dude, that's I, fair. Thanos I can't, I can't suck care. it. Yeah. The Russo brothers can't make a movie outside of the Marvel <laughs> universe. <laughs> anyway, I have one more film. Uh, actually, the week has been crazy. On Thursday when we went to go watch Escape Room, we also had a marathon planned. We came back to the house and we finished off Fear Street. So two weeks, three weeks ago, uh, we watched Fear Street Part 1, 1994. Then on Thursday, we watched Part 2, 1978, and Part 3, 19, no, 1666. That number, you know. 1666. Anyway, I don't want to talk too much about it. I I did a, like, very light research on it. And when I noticed that uh, Lee Janik had directed it, I was excited. She did Honeymoon. Do you guys remember that movie in in 2014? No. Oh, about the couple that go out to the... Okay. Uh, actually, you guys might like that one. It's, there's a little twist there for you. And then she did the Scream TV series. Like, she's got that kind of, like, teen, glossy, pretty people getting murdered thing going for her. Yeah, I'm good. And, uh... Well, you don't like that? No. You don't like pretty people dying? No. I'm over that, dude. I know you I'm don't not like slashers. 19 years ain't well, old anymore. You know, it's different because I always thought your problem with slashers was the whole, like, oh, they're doing drugs and well, boning. What's formulaic? Yeah. But that's, that's what a genre is. I hate is. math. Okay. <laughs> but that's what a genre is. You know, you, you uh, put your own a twist on A genre is whatever you make it, baby. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> you know? You take these walls and you tear them down. Well, there's a lot of needle drops in these, which you like, right? Yeah, so what, what were the needle drops in 1666? Gregorian chant? You know what? I don't know. Were there any? Oksana, help me out. I don't think there were. Uh, 
No, no I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, and um, I have no interest in watching the sixteen sixty. I'll tell you as much as I talk shit about the needle drop crap needle drop. in um nineteen seventy eight, which is like the the camp. It's the camp one that they filmed on the. Is um, there a sleepaway camp homage? It's Friday the Thirteenth mostly. Boo. Yeah, part six. They shot it on the same location. No chick with dick. <laughs> no, no chick. Sorry. Um. But they did have, a, there was an interesting narrative going on that I didn't catch till the end. And like it opened up with Nirvana on their unplugged set. And then it ended with David Bowie doing a song that I didn't realize was a Bowie song that Nirvana covered on their unplugged set. And it made me think like, oh, maybe there was, these were strategic. Now, the problem is that there's three features and they're all two hours long. Yeah. So I don't know if I'll be revisiting them. Actually, you know what? I forgot. I have it highlighted here. I pulled a clip. I have a uh, Lee talking about the um, the choice of doing three feature length things. Uh, here, I'll just play it. One of the cool things about the project for me is that we're doing this kind of new thing where they are their features, their movies, but they also have kind of this weird hybrid nature that is also like traditional television a little bit. So it's so, the, the narrative is so connected and so necessary. You, you need all of the pieces. You can appreciate the pieces by themselves, but you need all of the pieces to really understand the whole. Um, and this model, which Netflix kind of came up with of one a week felt like to me, the perfect sweet spot of like, okay, I get to watch this movie. It's a Friday. Next Friday, I'm going to get the next one, but not too long because I like instant gratification just as much as the next person. So I feel like this is a good sweet spot, but we'll see. Hate it. Now, I, I played exactly that. what they're doing. Well, the thing is, I think what she ultimately articulates there is that Netflix just wanted a, a three hitter here. Yeah. And she's kind of like trying to wrap her brain around it too. She's like, I don't know. It's weird. It's not a TV show. They're movies. And I, my experience with it, we watched one. Two weeks later, we watched two and three. Now, three had just dropped, so we watched it at midnight. And I'll tell you, when it was an event, and uh, we had Terrell over, we hang out with him all the time. We also had, uh, if you remember from previous episodes, Dan was over, the, the math mage from the Overlook Hour, uh -huh. the Overlook Theater, and he was struggling with it. He hadn't seen the first one, but he was watching 78. Oh, my God. And uh, just talking to him about it was a thing, but he left. The third movie is very Ginger Snaps 3. I, I won't bother explaining to you what that means, except it made more sense, and it really tied it all together. So these are three feature films you have to watch. And you know what? If you did it week by week, and it was an event, and I was 17, and it was like Friday, and we were going to make a thing out of it, like yeah. you all came over, dude, it'd be great. It would be fucking great. And I mean, a lot of gore. It's a good American teen movie where you get brutally, brutally murdered women stabbed multiple times, two in a frame being stabbed multiple times at times. Yet we fear the nipple. We do everything we can to simulate sex, but oh no, we are not going to show a boob. And uh, you know what? It was fucking good. There was a uh, lesbian teenagers. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, there is there is a dude. Uh, There's a black kid that loves Iron Maiden. Oh yeah, that's tight. Yeah, he was cool. Um, Fear of the dark. There, uh, weird choice of song. <laughs> that's what that's what he played. That's now, the song in the movie. I, just you know the context you set up, and then you go. They into set that. the I, movie. They put that song in the movie. No, so, dude, they're straight up. Like, it made me giggle. Some of the teen counselors are like going at it. Like, like on a table, the table's hitting the wall, like brutal, right? Yeah. You ain't going to see a butt in this damn show. But you will in life. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's America. Butts are part of sex. Randy, your thoughts? I agree. <laughs> Is that why you were trying to rip yours out of your shorts for pig? <laughs> yeah. That was my front uh, thigh. <laughs> It looked God, good. If it was my butt, that'd be funnier. You should have just cut the bottom and shredded both and it said it was a look. Oh, uh, the rip should have. If the rip was cracked a sack, then we got something else. Cracked a sack <laughs> rip? <laughs> cracked a sack. <laughs> yeah, anyway, man, I loved it. You know, I don't think I would have if it wasn't like me, Oksana, and like three people hanging out having fun with these films, but weird format. And honestly, you can't appreciate them alone. Like, if you just try to pick up part three, it won't work yeah. because the wraparound is very important. Yeah, I think I, I watched 94 and it was fine. I think I'm good. I actually think it was the worst one. I like it. 
and it sets the tone and i really like the way that the first killer looked but yeah the lore is pretty good here i mean we're doing a little bit of a lovecraftian thing which if your eyes rolled mine just did too yeah and um but i don't know man the acting was good and again i feel like i should say it. ginger snaps three i know you haven't seen them all one and two are chronological mm -hmm. three is like you know uh, 1542 or something pass it's almost like medieval but it's same characters and there's no reason why pass in this film it it kind of has like a star wars thing going on where we're doing like prophecy and time repeating itself is it good i don't watch movies pre-electricity <laughs> okay <laughs> Outside of 2001 Space Odyssey. All right. And next week, uh, Thomas, I know you're very angry. I skipped the bit. I'll tell you right now. I love the movie. I just, I think it would be a lot of fun to play with Clark on it. So. All right. I'll watch week. it. I'll watch it. I'll watch Pets Cop 2 or whatever. You'll, you'll it watch it in your hotel and be terrified. Oh, don't. Mind. <laughs> God. If I survive this week. We're going back to remote. I feel like if you're going to be doing remote, we should just be getting the video. Should we just do the video? Record it? I don't care. I don't either. That's literally where I'm that's at. That's how we do it. It's like, I don't give and a that's fuck. how decisions are made. <laughs> All right. Randy, take us home. Goodbye. Idiot. You sounded like a computer. That's what you I'm did. going for. Do it, do it again. Goodbye. <laughs> I think that one was worse. That's why you can't cry, because you're a fucking that's robot. Right. You sound like the weakest link, lady. Oh yeah, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. See, you got yeah, self awareness then. Now you're getting cute. <laughs>